Starting a new project requires a careful assessment of the cash flows it will generate in the future. We need to measure the approximate amounts and the point in time when they will be received or paid. This is critical for making an informed decision and is one of the main variables that help us decide whether a project is feasible or not. Determining the value of a project can be challenging because of the time value of money. As we already know, a dollar earned in the future is not equal to a dollar earned today. Discounting cash flows and obtaining their present value is a way to account for this. For example, if an investor wants to buy a given stock, he would first estimate the future cash flows that the stock would generate, discount those cash flows, and then add their present values. If the amount that is obtained is greater than the initial investment, the investment is feasible and will create value. Otherwise, it is not valid from a financial perspective. Here is the net present value formula. Net present value is equal to the sum of discounted cash flows minus the initial investment. Let's calculate the net present value of a given project in Excel. The following is the discounted cash flows approach to estimating net present value. A firm plans to build a plant that will produce the following cash flows. 30 in year 1, 120 in year 2, 200 in year 3, and 120 in years 4 and 5. After year 5, the plant will be completely obsolete and will have to be replaced. The plant costs 500 and the firm's marginal borrowing rate is 10%. The financial director of the firm needs to assess whether to go through with the investment or not. Calculating the net present value of the project would allow him to make an informed decision. You can see the net present value formula on the right part of the screen. The first thing I will do is discount the cash flows. The initial investment of 500 is today. We will consider the current time as zero because it is zero years from now. Thus, it will remain as minus 500. Okay, the next cash flow of 30 is after one year. 120 after year two. And so on. To discount the first future cash flow, we need to divide it by 1 plus the interest rate, elevated to the first degree. The degree to which we are elevating depends on how many years from the present the cash flow we are discounting is. So, for example, the next cash flow will be elevated to the second degree because it is 2 years from now and so on. The formula that we typed can be pasted directly to the right. If we fix the cell references of the interest rate with dollar signs. Great. This is how I obtained the discounted cash flows that will result from building the plant. Let's sum them with the initial investment that is necessary, and we'll find the net present value of the project. The sum is negative, which means that the project is not feasible and should be avoided. All right, this was awesome a straightforward example of using Excel for financial purposes. And here's some more news for you. Excel has a built-in NPV function, which can discount cash flows for you directly and makes typing math formulas manually redundant.
<laughs> Nevertheless, we have to be careful as in certain situations, the function is not as flexible as manual calculations. Naturally, the name of the function is NPV. The main inputs we need are an interest rate and a cash flow range. Once we've selected them, we can press enter, right? Hmm, I obtained a different result compared to the one I got before. How come? The answer lies in properly understanding how the NPV function works. The investment begins one step before the first cash flow and ends with the last cash flow in the formula. Therefore, the initial investment shouldn't be included in the calculation. It just pushes, so to speak, all other investments a period ahead. And that's why the end result is different. The correct thing to do is to write a formula that sums the initial investment and the net present value of the future cash flows. Let's check whether this method will provide the same number as the one we obtained before. Yes, it is 100% correct. Great. Therefore, it is up to you to decide which approach to use. The mathematics behind them are completely the same. The concept of net present value is very important as it stands at the core of some fundamental financial techniques. It is applicable in situations where a person or a corporation faces an important financial decision. I hope you're enjoying the fact that we are digging deeper into the field of finance. This will certainly continue in our next lecture. See you there.